the early 1800s, champagne, it was a problem. Because in fact, you couldn't, you didn't know what was gonna happen. You didn't know why thing, the bottles would explode. You didn't know if that next fermentation was gonna take place. You didn't know. So it was still pretty much a still wine, but people kind of liked the bubbles. So Jean-Antoine Chaptal figured out the relationship of sugar and fermentation. So when that happened, then the next scientist, Andre Francois, who was a pharmacist by trade, figured out the exact relationship of sugar that should go in to make A, the glass not explode, but B, even better, make the bubbles exist. So shortly after, uh, the, Madame, the Madame Nicole Postnardin, or the, the widow of Veuve Clicquot, um, she figured out rumage, or riddling, turning the bottles a quarter turn every day to get the chunks at the bottom, which was good. You'd put the sugar in and you'd put yeast in, but the yeast would eat the sugar and you have chunks left over. So she figured out how to get them to the neck so we can get all that stuff out and have a clean, pure thing. And then in the 1820s, the Dom Perignon story developed. So 1874 was when the first brewed champagne was created, and it was created by Pomeroy, which is pretty cool too. Champagne was the beverage of the czars, of kings, of queens, of, of everybody that was important and famous. And it was such an amazing thing that if you were royalty, you needed champagne. But it became the image of champagne. So it became the image of luxury and the high life and all those things, and it's still that way today. How often do we decide that we're not going to drink a bottle of champagne because it's not a special occasion? So I tell you every day is a special occasion, especially today because it's Tuesday. We all got up and we're all here, so we should be celebrating with champagne. <laughs>